So after tramming the table, I've made my finishing cuts and I have I'll get it in the right spot. 21 21.68 21.65 21.65 21.69 So we're within um, four hundredths which for all intents and purposes is it's within one thou overall which isn't too bad off a shaper um, especially one that's at least 30 years old um, and it's never been rebuilt so if I wanted to muck around with cigarette papers and wedges and bits and pieces I could probably even get it closer but there's no point at the moment um, I'm not going to gain anything more out of that um, yeah, pretty happy. Um, all right, so now long edges. Um, what I'll do for the long edges is I'll actually set the long edge up on here. I'll set that up on there so it'll be clean for the side of the table. Just clean from there. Um, and I'll tidy that, the tidy one edge up. And then what I'll do is I'll turn it over and get an accurate depth on it and um, machine the other edge to be uh, to give me an um, equal dimension. And then when we do the sides, we'll do the, I'll do the sides off the table like that and they will be square to the table. So I'm going to do all this without moving the table now that I've got the table set up. Um, and for all intents and purposes, now that I'm working off the side of the table, I should be more accurate than I was working off the top. So we'll see how I go. Okay, last shot for this sequence. So just showing my setup how I've got it clamped to the side of the table. Um, that's faced off. Still got to do the bottom side. Um, so that's going to be the tricky bit is <coughs> getting that level or getting this distance from the top of the table the same when it's foot and get my hand into the shot. Getting this here at the um, same height end to end with the table when it's flipped over 180 degrees is going to be the challenge. So we'll see how we go. Um, Alright, that's going to do it for tonight. I'm going to call it stumps and go inside. So I thought I'd give you a quick look up at the side setup that I've got. This is the last cut on the side. Um, that's how I've got it clamped. When I was um, doing the horizontal, I measured off the bottom to here using my uh, engineer's square and then what I've done is I when I squared the top off I uh, squared it off the top of the table using that so uh, this is where we're at Um, M is for the master face. That's the one that I've squared everything off. Um, at the moment, it doesn't matter which face I'm using for um, for doing the ends. It's um, that's it. Really doesn't matter which one I use for the ends because uh, the ends are only relevant to the side to the uh, narrow sides. Okay, so we're out of the shaper, we're in the mill. I've got my angle set and I've just taken a little T 
test cut along the edge there where it doesn't look like it's quite in focus but I've taken a test cut along this corner to make sure that I've got an equal ang equal um, chamfer from end to end as you see a little bit better there and what that does is that just verifies that the vice is trammed in true that the vice is trammed in true that the um, materials in there level that I've got everything spot on so uh, now we'll go and do some uh, more machining we'll start putting uh, a decent chamfer in there so this was the next setup we finished machining this and then what I've had to do is I've had to put a one millimeter deep recess through here 129 millimeters long still at the same angle as what we had and so there we go now what we've got to do is we've got to turn it around and we've got to put a reverse angle in the other side to uh, accommodate the uh, lip so I'll set that up and then we'll have a look at that supervisor is hard at work keeping an eye on what I'm doing For now, we're um, machining a groove for the slot. I don't know whether it's actually better looking at it this way with the light on or the light off, but uh, that's what we're doing. These are one millimetre deep cuts at 1600 rpm. Um, I don't know what the travel speed is. Well, we had a bozo moment. The only problem is I don't know, I'm not sure what the cause of the bozo moment was. Um, you'll see there's a little chunk out of the end here. I was cutting from right to left as we view it. And um, we've been, I've just been working way backwards and forwards, up and down, no problems at all. Half a mil at a time, which is... Uh, same speed, same cuts, must have done seven or eight of them now. And all of a sudden, pow! There's the end of my end mill. So we'll change it out to uh, another one and we'll see if we can work out what happened. Um, better not break too many more of these because they haven't got too many more spare. to a uh, troll to fit up on it anyway. So I just put some uh, slots in the end. Um, these cuts are one mil. At, uh, what have we got? 540 revs. There's a fair bit of chat up. So as it breaks through them, it is um, one of the doing the cutting.
saw that. I hope I didn't have them sold on the way. Okay, so what we've done here is we've taken two uh, bits of 12mm uh, mild steel square bar and we've drilled a couple of holes in them before I put them in the uh, in the vise that is and then I've machined a, a step in it now what we're going to do is we're going to use these for clamps um, so what we'll do is we'll uh, go and do a, a little bit more work on them we've got to get a 30 degree angle on here um, which I'll probably do by hand well, I could do it in here but it's just uh, yeah, I'll see how I go. I'll make up my mind in a minute. Now, this is my rough setup to get 30 degree angle. It's a little bit, it's moved a bit. But what I've got is I've got a parallel. I've got my cheap Chinese 30, 60, 90. And that's in there. It's not exact, but for what I'm doing here, it'll be near enough. If I was arguing sheep stations, what I could then do is come back here and I could tram across the top there, make sure that I've got exactly, that it's exactly level, but for what, for what I'm doing there, that is plenty close enough. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll machine across here at 30 degrees.